Reality denied comes back to haunt. Philip K. Dick, Flow My Tears, the policeman said. Hello, and today I want to talk about Flow My Tears, the policeman said. It's by Philip K. Dick. Uh, And I'm a big fan of Philip K. Dick. This is the fourth book I've read by him. Book. I wanted to read this book because there's this like kind of famous interview uh, with Philip K. Dick, and he's. It's. I think it was like in the 80s or something, and he was like talking about how uh, he had this experience, and that okay, the experience was something that he wrote in one of his books, uh, and this was the book uh, that the experience was from, and there was something about like it came from some Bible or something. His sort of conclusion or his idea was that like, when he was writing a book, he was like channeling some alternative reality, some other reality that existed in the out, out there. And that the book was something that had happened on one of these, in one of these alternative realities. Um, and so it wasn't just fiction. It wasn't just something that was made up. Um, and I think that's kind of like an interesting theme that kind of goes through like a lot of his books and and this is something i'm just sort of realizing now and and that is like kind of like a common theme it's like or that everyone exists in their own reality and that they're sort of existing in a reality that is different from the realities that they're sort of experiencing um so basically uh the guy the main character's name is jason and he's this like famous singer sort of entertainer he has this television show uh he's pretty famous like i think it says something like 30 million watchers every night or whatever one night after work uh he's with his girlfriend and he gets a phone call and the phone call is from one of his exes and so he goes to visit her i don't uh, and he shows up at her place and um when he's there she like gives him this bag and like he opens up the bag i guess and there's like this kind of monster thing or whatever on it and it like jumps onto him and like it has feeding tubes and i don't really know what this monster is uh but he like grabs alcohol or something he pours it on the the monster and it kills it and it falls off or whatever but the feeding tubes are sort of still inside of him and then basically he just kind of like doesn't remember anything and then he wakes up and he's like in this dirty sort of hotel uh, and he's just lying on the bed and uh what he's still wearing his like suit and he still has his money uh, but that's like all that he has. Um, and he doesn't have his IDs anymore. Like he doesn't have his identity anymore. And like, you know, he goes downstairs uh, into the lobby or to the foyer of the hotel. And he talks to the guy at the front desk and he asks like, oh, can you help me get some IDs? And so the guy like brings him in a car. He asks for money. So he gives the guy money. Uh, and then he brings him in a car to some place. Uh, they meet a woman and this woman can make IDs for him. And so he gives her money as well. The guy who brought him there more money because he's like a he's like a narc basically. Or he's like a he'll, he's he's a, a contact for the police. And so he'll tell on Jason if if he doesn't give him more money so jason gives him more money and the guy goes away uh and then so he's with this girl and then she makes these ids for him these fake ids and he does a really good job of it he says like they don't like like the signatures are all different or like they're the same but they're not exactly lined up uh and so she does a really good job of making these fake ids for him uh, and then uh he kind of like realizes that she's like you know dangerous uh and crazy and she says that she wants him to stay um and so anyways he, he runs away and then he uses the ids and he doesn't get caught um and they work perfectly uh and then but she grabs him again she grabs him and she takes him uh back to uh her apartment and at her apartment there is her like contact like her police contact and and she asks jason all these questions uh and then he takes jason with him to the police station and then they do like this like they do all these scans on him they take all his information to try and identify who he is i think there's like some confusion uh they think that he's someone else um and then that who he isn't but has a similar name to him and like he says like he got plastic surgery and that like he he decided to change his life and move away and that's why he wasn't there anymore that's why he didn't really look like the picture um but but it turns out though like they don't actually have any id for him anymore and so basically he's lost his id he's lost his identity he tries to go to like one of his restaurants where he like one of the bars where he was always where he always had they always had a table for him and the guy's like i don't know who you are i won't let you come in uh, and then he tries to call his ex and 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 she and he tells like he's like once he's like can i go stay with you and she says no like she doesn't even believe really that he's who he says he is like she doesn't remember him completely not completely but not she doesn't completely remember him and she doesn't completely forget him so then after that i think he goes to like las vegas and um he meets this like he goes to this bar that he used to frequently go to uh and he meets this woman there who used to like was a law a lover a long long time ago um and then they kind of connect again and they kind of talk about people who they knew she ends up taking him to her apartment and they sleep together um and then while while they're at her apartment there's a tracker in his clothes um and he 
doesn't know about it being there, but the police are actually tracking him down. And so the police show up, they break down the door, they find him, they arrest him, uh, they take him to the police station, they take him to Los Angeles back to where he came from, um, and then he gets questioned some more, uh, and then he gets, like, these 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 trackers put in him and like he tell he like he basically he doesn't say like I, i've lost my identity but he kind of like he talks about like how like he doesn't know who he is the police i think it's the police chief takes away his id uh and then gives him like another id that's like a like a, a special pass by the police and so like he doesn't have any ids anymore but if he gets stopped by the checkpoints on the street then he'll be able to show his like card you know he'll be able to show this like police document and they'll leave him alone leaving the police station or this lady stops by and like kind of teases him um and then eventually he gets in a car with her uh and then she's like you have these trackers in you and so she removes these like two trackers and then she says there's like this this nuclear bomb or something that can blow him up inside of him as well and uh she removes that so she removes all these trackers and stuff from him that she shows in her car like in the back seat she has like his records um uh, from from when he was like from the past when he was famous um and so he kind of like he goes with her he trusts her a little bit uh and then they go back to she brings him to her house which is actually the police chief's house um and inside at the house she's like oh do you want some mescaline and he's like he's like uh, okay uh i want to but he's like i want to sort of be cognizant i don't want to take too much and she's like oh don't be a kid don't be a baby just take this dose and it was like a huge dose and so he's like tripping out and he's having trouble he's like too he thinks it's too much and he tells her that he needs to like calm down and then so she runs off to go find this drug that will counteract the, the mescaline and then she kind of goes va- missing like she doesn't come back and like i think he passes out for a while he goes out to the car to get the records comes back in again tries to play the records but no sound comes uh out eventually he goes and he finds her um and like her clothes are still brand new and like like their clothes look like just like they look like but her body is all like like bones, skull and bones. It's, it looks like tons of time has passed. And so then he is scared and he runs off. He runs away and he kind of escapes from their house compound. He goes out into the street and he finds this lady. And uh, she has a car and he asks her to take him with him because he says he needs to go to the hospital and then he i think they go to a coffee shop or they go to a restaurant or something and then at the restaurant like he he looks in the jukebox and his his song is there and he plays it in it and he can play it and then it kind of like that helps him like kind of become more real or something after this he goes and he he goes to stay with his his girlfriend meanwhile is at the police station and so the police chief's sister wife dies um, and then he has his his uh, second in command tells him that he has to blame it on someone, and so he says he's going to blame it on Jason, the the guy who the story's about. And so like he's he's blames it on him, and then the sort of the police are looking for Jason to arrest him. He he goes to the police station, turns himself in, I think. And then the police chief uh, he leaves his house, uh, or sorry, he leaves work, and then he I think he stops at like a gas station, and like he has this kind of weird conversation with this guy, and then he like leaves, and then then he comes back again, and he talks to the the guy at the police at the gas station i think he hugs him or something um and the guy i think the police the detective is kind of like questioning his motives like he's like he's like but this guy you know he's like jason's not actually guilty he's not actually the person who should be taking the blame for the death of but i'm gonna he just lets it go anyways he just lets it happen and i think that's why he tries to have this connection with this this guy at the gas station because he wants to like he wants to feel a human connection because he's like going against everything he believes in by like kind of letting this guy innocent guy take the blame for something so then we find out that uh, jason actually is found not guilty uh and he gets more famous as a result of all of this because he was like kind of falsely accused and falsely put on trial for something he didn't do and he gets more famous but he ends up dying in obscurity we also learned that the reason why the lady died uh, was because she took this drug and it kind of like modified space and time and that was actually the reason why jason sort of stopped being a celebrity why he stopped existing is because this drug that she took like somehow changed reality and it changed his reality some like more significant like in some way where he ceased to exist like he still lived as existed as a person but like reality changed so that he didn't exist anymore and it was because of this drug that she took and so um and that's kind of like what i was talking about in the beginning of the video about the whole like the differences in realities is like how we live in different realities ourselves and how we kind of like see things differently and we are in different places it's like we live in different realities even though we're side by side i think a big sort of theme in here is identity and like who is ident like what who are you like how how can you be who you are and like do you continue to be yourself when you you aren't yourself anymore 
And that's kind of like a big thing is like, cause he kind of stops being himself. And like, that is really complicated. Like it's really confusing for him. Like he can't be himself if he isn't himself. Um, and so there's like that questions identity. There's also that, like this, this sort of openness to drugs. Um, I think it was during the eighties and stuff. So it was a long time before now. And so like, I know in the, in the book, they talk about like smoking weed, uh, that occurs. There's like the story, um, where the girl, so the lady he met at the bar who went home with, she talks about how like she used to smoke marijuana. And one time she took like a really big bong hit and she felt unalive for some time. And she felt like she died kind of. And, um, because of that she never wanted to to smoke marijuana again but then she just smoked cigarettes all the time so there's like kind of that like you know those kind of the references to those kind of weird experiences we can have with drugs um and i would say it's pretty a little bit similar to another book that he wrote uh called the man in a high castle um because like it has like a very similar theme about like how like one person can live in one reality and another person can live in a different reality and like those realities come together or they they kind of coincide if you're if you like my re reviews if you're interested in what I, the books i have to read then uh, click that subscribe button leave a comment below like this video and uh, thank you very much uh, see you next time goodbye